The flow of the change management process has strong similarities with the request fulfillment process. In the same way of the service requests, the changes will be made through the execution of pre-configured work orders. The first difference from the other processes that we notice is that the opening is never performed by a final user through the portal but only by CMD build technical operators. However, there is still the possibility that a change process is automatically started by reclassifying an incident or a request opened by a user. Despite this reclassification, which means the closure of the original process and the opening of the change, is however an operation carried out by the help desk or the specialists. After the opening phase, there is a classification phase, followed by the analysis and execution phases. Depending on the selected classification, the advancement may be submitted for an approval by a certain approval group. In particular, after you have performed your classification, the workflow will verify if there has been specified any approval role and in that case, the approver intervention will be required before proceeding to the analysis step. Please note that being a change, a workflow designed for being used by a technical staff only, that approval will never be executed through the portal but only from the CMD build application. Furthermore, some approval may be required according to the same rules before performing the analysis and the closure step. When the closure is rejected, the group which performed the execution will go back to the analysis step. Otherwise, it will reach the process closure. As you can see, this process sends several automatic emails. The first one is sent during the opening phase and is addressed to the user who submitted the service request or signaled the malfunction reclassified as a change. After that, the workflow will send an email every time it changes the execution group. For instance, at every escalation, either horizontal or vertical, and every time an approval is required or performed. Just like the incident and the request, the change management process can be found in the service desk section of the navigation menu. Let's now start a new process and indicate the requester of this change, the channel which the request has arrived through, and a short description of the change request. For example, we want a new implementation of a new CMD build process. From this panel, I can also consult the requester's specific data in case, for example, I need to contact them. Let's advance the process. And let's go now to the classification step. As mandatory fields, we have to indicate category and subcategory. In this case, we will choose application and CMD build workflow respectively. The selection is important since it allows the forwarding of the process to the proper group during the escalation and identifies the approval role, if any. In this example, we choose medium urgency and impact. We are now able to choose to perform an escalation, close the process, or go on with the analysis. Since the classification associated to the CMD build workflow subcategory involves an approval, the next group taking charge of the process is the change manager group. From the tab email, 
we see that the system has prearranged an email that will be sent to the change manager group in order to notify them that this change needs to be approved. In the email, there is also the link to access directly the record of this change in CMD build. Let's advance now the process, which at this point proceeds to the approval step. As you can see, the user that opened the request cannot edit it anymore because the process is now assigned to the change manager group. Let's now log out and log in as a user belonging to the change manager group and open the change section. As you can see, being logged in as a user who belongs to the group in charge of the approval, we are now allowed to edit the activity. At this point, I can insert some approval notes and decide if I want to approve the change or to reject it. In our example, we are going to approve it. But before proceeding, we want to check the email generated by the system. As you can see, the system has prepared an email for the group that generated this change in order to notify them that the change has been approved. In this way, they are notified that the process has been approved without having to check it continuously. In this way, when they receive the email, they know that the process is waiting again for their intervention, which can be started directly from the email with the proper link. Let's click on Advance. The process is now sent back to the specialists, and as Change Manager, I cannot edit it anymore. We then change our role by logging out and logging in again as a user belonging to the specialist group chosen by the classification. We are now in the analysis step. We are asked to indicate how much time we spent to carry out the analysis, for instance, three hours, and some analysis notes. For example, we can say that we have understood the reasons of the problem, and at this point we can either proceed with the execution, go back to the classification, or perform another analysis step. Let's proceed with the execution. We notice that, similar to the request, the work orders associated to this change type have already been generated and pre-filled. This is obtained by reading a specific table which holds all the work orders associated to change management for the particular category and subcategory we chose during the classification phase. Since I don't want to spend too much time closing this process, I'm going to execute just the first work order and delete the other ones in order to proceed faster. Let's advance the process and start the execution of this work order. Actually, before the execution of the work order, the process is submitted again to the change manager for approval. So while the first approval was a generic approval of the activities to be performed, here we have a specific approval related to the work orders that the specialist is going to perform. At this point, we log out and log in again as a user belonging to the change manager group 
and click on Edit. We are now able to verify the planned activities to be performed against the information provided by the analysis before they are generated and sent to the group it may concern. We agree with the activity schedule and we go on approving it. Notice now this tab called Register. Let's open it. As you can see, here the system tracks every step of the process which has been executed up until this moment. We know, for instance, that user Tom Smith performed the classification activity and chose to proceed with the analysis at this time, that the Brook user executed the first approval and inserted these approval notes, and then that Tom Smith accesses the process again for the analysis and that it took him three hours to do. At this point, we can move on and the workflow is placed in the specialist's hands. This is the first execution step of the unique work order that we decided to make when we were impersonating the change manager. In case we have more than one work order, the system starts the parallel execution of the various work orders, but submits their execution depending upon the process set by the configuration. Thus, we may have a group of parallel activities or sequential executions depending on how these work orders have been mapped into the relation with the classification. Let's say now that the execution of this activity took, for example, four hours. That the activity has been successfully accomplished and everything according to the prefect plans. At this point, we can close directly the work order. So we do. We have now reached the last approval step, the closure approval. The process returns to the change manager's control we impersonate him again and click on Edit Activity. We click on Edit Activity in order to decide whether we want to approve or reject the closure of the work order. In this context, viewing the list and the register is very useful because it can tell us everything that was done during this process. Now we can approve the closure or force the flow to go back to the analysis step if we notice that the solution implemented does not satisfy the request or is incomplete. Let's advance the process and now the process returns for the last time to the specialist for final closure. The specialist inserts the closure notes that will be used by the system to pre-configure the email that will be sent to the requester to notify him that the change he asked for has been done.
let's now advance the process, which in this way ends the process. So, if we return to the chart we were analyzing at the beginning, we can summarize the flow we followed. From the opening by a specialist group, we jumped into the classification, then we had the initial approval, the analysis, the analysis approval, the execution of the work order, in our case only one, the closure approval, and to the final closure by the specialist. Obviously, many things in this process are configurable. In, in particular, for every type of change, I can define whether the approval is necessary or not, because it could happen that for certain operations, this transfer to the specialist group, then to the approval group, isn't deemed necessary, and therefore these steps can be disabled.